Hi everyone, my name is Lech from Chocofur.com and today I want to show you how to create this simple Blender scene with just the basic Blender experience. This is the second video from the Chocofur Model Manager series, so if you haven't seen the first one, um, it should be visible on the screen somewhere, go and check it out. Chocofur Model Manager is a completely free Blender add-in that comes with over 300 free 3D models and materials that you can use in all of your projects. The add-in significantly speeds up one of the most tedious processes in Blender, which is importing the external 3D models and keeping them in an organized library. So now I want to show you how to use Blender and build those simple yet very interesting scenes and save them as an image file. Feel free to share the results of your work in the comments section of this video or on Twitter using the Chocofer and Blender hashtags. And now, without a further ado, let's just jump into it. I'm going to start with a completely new Blender file, select everything and delete all of the objects. And I will use the furniture set category, choose the free sofa modular. And here you can see we have separate sofa pieces like puzzles, but we also have the pre-made setups ready. I'm going to add this one to the scene. I'm going to press R and Z key, then hold control so we can uh, rotate our model more precisely and holding control key, I'm also able to snap it to the grid. I'm going to also add this model, rotate it the same way and move it to the left. Let's now put a rug in between those sofas. So let's go to details, rugs, and here we have two models. I'm going to use the first one and it appears directly at the scene center. I'm also going to add a sideboard. This one is perfect. Also need to rotate it and let's move it somewhere here. So let me now create plane, which will be the floor of our 3D scene. And let me add cube. Well, again, I could have used the one deleted at first. I'm just scaling it within the S, uh, sorry, within the uh, X axis. And now I'm manipulating it uh, in the very basic way. So we are able to create this kind of wall. And I'm also going to add the very basic light source. Let's use the point lamp, push it here. I'm going to press Z, switch to rendered view. And by default, it doesn't look that interesting. So let's go to the render settings. Let's enable ambient occlusion. Let's enable bloom. And the most important settings are the screen space reflection and refraction here. With this green icon, I'm able to manipulate the properties of the lamp. So let's increase its power by 10 times and let's make the environment completely dark. So within this icon, I'm just changing the color to the pitch black. Let's add some extra details, for example, pictures on the wall. Let's use the details, pictures category. And here we have those three image frames. They are added here on top. Again, I'm going to rotate them within the Z axis, scale them down a little bit and move towards the wall. By pressing the numpad dot key, I'm able to zoom in directly to those models. And I think it looks pretty cool. Um, let's now add a plant, maybe the one from the previous uh, setup. When I press G and then shift Z, that excludes the Z axis from my transformation. Let me do it again. When I just press G, I'm moving the object within the all axis. But when I now press shift Z, I'm excluding the Z axis from the transformation. So I'm able to slide this plant within the X and the Y axis only. That's a pretty useful um, shortcut if you want to move things around very quickly. Let's now add some extra stuff. For example, 
Uh, let's maybe add this model. And again, I'm going to press G, Shift Z. So it slides on the floor. I'm going to rotate it freely like this. And let's maybe add some stuff here. So I'm going to uh, fast forward or Let's, let's make this part of the video a bit faster. Uh, I'm going to do a time lapse here and get back to you once the model are placed. All of the models are now in place, so I'm going to add a camera by pressing Shift A and choosing the camera from the menu. Let's move it slightly back. I'm going to press Ctrl Numpad 0 to have a view from my camera and here this green icon allows me to edit the camera settings. Um, I like to change the passport to opacity to 100% here so I only see what's going to be visible in the rendering but as you can see I'm not able to move the camera now so when I left click here and drag I'm able to create another 3D viewport and I'm going to use it to move my camera around the scene so I can just hold this gizmo and move the camera slightly to the back so all of the models are visible and let's maybe move the camera a little bit up so you might have some kind of bugs visible for example our image disappears here and what i found out is you can fix this by changing the clip values here to something higher than 0.1 and when i do it you can see uh, the look of the images improves let's now work on the lighting a little bit i'm able to change the light type from point to spot and once i do it you can see it gets much darker but we will fix it by increasing the size of the lamp here and maybe by moving it up a little bit like this. Let's also work on the blend so the transition is smoother. And we can also adjust the color of the lamp so maybe let's make it a little bit bluish like this. I'm now going to press Shift D to duplicate this lamp and then X to move it in straight line and let's add another set of lamps here maybe smaller angle size here let's move it a bit up so we see the entire picture and let's change the light uh, lamps color to something warmer like this I'm gonna press Alt D to move the newly created lamp to the left and Alt D again to move it to the right just like that I can click this icon to disable the helper uh, outlines as you can see here so we have a better view on how the final rendering will, will look like so yeah I guess this looks pretty pretty good let's change the floor texture the floor color to something darker so when I select the plane object I'm able to click this icon here to add a new material and I will just change the base color to something like this so the carpet stands out a little bit more there are two final touches I want to apply before rendering the image first one will be adding some light to the lamp as you can see here it only has one material added so I will create a new material slot I will now click here to add a new material and I will change the material type from the standard principal shader to the emission shader right here now I'm going to, with this lamp selected, I'm going to press the tab key to enter the edit mode. And now I'm going to hover my cursor over those plain areas and hit the L key. When I do it, it selects the entire uh, surface. And now with this material selected, I'm going to assign it to those 
uh, planes and you can see we have some light visible. If I increase the strength of the emission shader, you can see the light becomes much more visible. And if we have the blue enabled here, we also get this very nice glow effect coming from the light. So let's maybe add it to 40 so it looks a little bit more interesting. And we can also change the color maybe to something a bit colder like this. I'm also able to rotate the lamp. If I press the R key, we can have more of those surfaces visible. Uh, the another step I would like to apply to the scene is adding the irradiance volume. So it's this object here. When I add it in this view, you don't really see it visible here because it's uh, more technical feature that will make the light a little bit more realistic. So I'm just scaling it up so those four dots cover the entire area of my scene. Now I have to do it in the side view as well. So I'm just using the S key and choosing the axis to align everything together nicely. Now here within the render settings, all I have to do right now is go to the indirect lighting and click the bake indirect lighting button. So you can see the calculation progress bar here. And this is the illumination we have. Final step will be adjusting the colors. So within the render settings here, I'm gonna go to the color management. And with the gamma and exposure, I can change the overall contrast of the image and the brightness. So maybe let's add a little bit of extra exposure. And within the look here, I'm able to apply the filters. So if we use, let's say, medium high contrast filter, you can see the image gets a little bit more um, clamped in shadows and in the highlights. I think the high contrast setting looks pretty good. I also like using the curves here. And if you choose one of the letters, they correspond to the color channels. So if I choose the red channel and move this curve up, it means the red color will get more visible. If I move it down, it becomes less visible. So we get more blues and greens. So you can just play around with the curves freely and aim for the look you want to achieve. I would say something like this may be a warm kind of interior looks interesting, at least for me. You can always go back and edit the color of the lamps. They will also impact the rendering in a very strong way. So maybe let's desaturate these lamps a little bit. When I clicked on the color bar, here we also have the letters. Hue stands for the hue, sorry, the H stands for the hue, S for the saturation and V for value. So if I want to desaturate those lamps, I, on, I can only use this one slider and it does the job for me. So with everything more or less set up, uh, all you have to do right now is just press the F12 button and Blender will generate this cool image for you. Now to save your rendering, go to the image settings here, save as, and here you can choose the file format. So let's say JPEG. Uh, the very basic settings, you can use the 100% quality, change the name of your file and hit save as image. In the next video, I'll explain additional features of the model manager, such as expanding the models library, installing additional Chocofer models and creating your own Blender assets that will work with our add-on. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope you'll find our model manager useful in your daily Blender projects. Take care.